In this video, we're going to look at number systems, representation of binary data, and logical operations. Recall that in previous presentation, we were talking about closed box Turing machines. And now it's time to take a look at specific inputs and their encodings. Internally, in computer circuitry, wires conduct electricity and specific high or low amount of electric current can represent two types of signals, either logical zero or logical one. Combinations of wires can represent unique combinations of zeros and ones. And for example, if we have eight wires, then the maximum number of unique combinations that could be constructed from all sorts of um, patterns of zeros and ones would be 256. In general, so you can raise uh, to the k wires power. That would give you the number of different combinations. Combination of bit patterns is a code that represents a data value. The data types may be represented by different sets of bit patterns. And generally speaking, different sizes of uh, bit patterns would correspond to different data types. Instruction set architecture on specific computer is constrained to specific data types. Typical uh, bit patterns would be 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, 64-bit, and so forth, multiples of 2. Data type presumes knowledge about the data size, like I told you previously. And then it comes with a set of operations that would be typically available for this specific data type. Um, basic or primitive or fundamental data types include positive and negative integers, by the way, a small 8-bit uh, size integers represent characters as well, as well as floating point numbers uh, such as 3.14, a real number scale. Integer data types. Uh, we start with unsigned integers and typical usage of them to uh, use them in, as counters, like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, no negative numbers. Uh, but also a representation of memory locations or memory addresses. It's also an unsigned integer. Uh, there are no negative memory locations. Only positive numbers are used to identify specific places in memory. Sign integers represent both positive and negative and zero uh, quantities. So, of course, uh, we use a minus sign as a prefix in notation of negative numbers in conventional arithmetics. However, if we are constrained by the data type of some sort, whether it being 8-bit, 16-bit, or 32-bit, and so forth, we have to divide, roughly, the entire space of unique combinations into two halves. One half would represent positive numbers and another half of that space of unique combinations would be reserved for negative numbers. So we have to make a decision what codes and or encodings in general would we assign to uh, encode the values, both positive and negative. First look is at the magnitude data types. And the magnitude data types are using uh, the highest bit or the le leftmost bit to indicate a negative value. A bit of, a, of an inconvenience here is that uh, there are two representations of a zero. There is a positive zero and a negative zero. And here all possible combinations between these two ranges um, would include all numbers from minus 0 to, 100, to negative 127, whereas 
at the top of it uh, of the switch we have a representation of the positive numbers ranging from a zero and then one two three four five all the way through 127 another possible representation of positive and negative values uh, is called one's complement numbers and this name one's complement numbers comes from the fact that um, to represent for example negative one which is which in its positive representation is just all zeros with uh, the uh, lowest bit set to one we flip all bits so therefore minus one right here this is a decimal representation becomes all ones will with zero at the lowest bit so the algorithm is to take positive number set leftmost bit equal to one observe that all negative numbers would have one at the uh, leftmost bit or the highest bit and then flip all the bits of the positive number so that zero becomes one and one becomes zero the drawback of one's complement integers is that making arithmetic operations with them is quite difficult so it would require quite cumbersome hardware uh, that would obviously be slower uh, if we put it together to make arithmetics uh, with uh, one's complement integers the next possibility is two's complement integer so the idea is that positive integers are represented in a straightforward positional scheme just like we had before pretty much all of these are positive numbers encoded normally uh, and then the corresponding ne corresponding negative integer uh, is computed by inverting every single bit of the positive number for instance if this is a one so we have all zeros and one at the uh, rightmost or the lowest bit we invert every bit which would be all ones and then the zero and then we add one look how minus one is represented by all ones compared to all zeros over here and then this used to be a zero and now we added one to it so it becomes all bits set to one this is the representation of a, a negative uh, one in two's complement integer type of encoding and step number three if there's a carry over from the highest bit ignored is used really only when you're converting zero to a negative zero or negative zero to a positive zero this rule allows us to ignore any carryovers from all ones when we add one and therefore it remains zero so notice this is a nice feature of two's complement that uh, there is only one represent, representation for zero there's no negative or positive just one uh, representation of a zero uh, the range uh, if this is an 8-bit quantity or 8-bit size data type then uh, we have a uh, possibility to encode zero uh, positive numbers in range from 1 to 127 and also a range to encode from minus 1 and minus 1 128 so that's the uh, a look and feel of two's complement integer type of encoding here we have an example of decimal negative 13 and computing uh, its encoding based on its positive representation so apparently the positive representation of 13 is uh, 01101 uh, in a 5-bit uh, data type so first step is to take the positive value uh, flip every bit uh, computing the complement so that we have uh, every bit over here is flipped so 0 becomes 1 and 1 becomes 0 and then the third step is to add 1 so here we take this uh, zero and add one to it so it becomes 
1.10011. So this is a representation of a negative 13 in two's complement encoding. And for demonstration, if we start with the negative 13 and invert every bit and then add 1, notice that this becomes an exact equivalent of the positive 13. So the same set of steps uh, brings us back to the positive number. So th these are the properties of the two's complement encoding. Also important to note that it's very easy to determine whether a two's complement value is a positive or negative. You just simply look at the leftmost bit, and if it's 1, it's a negative. Uh, if it's a 0, it's a positive. So leftmost bit is considered to be the sign bit, indicating the sign of the number. Now we can talk a little bit about addition of two's complement numbers. These rules generally apply how hardware executes addition of complement, two's complement numbers. Uh, and uh, they really kind of uh, mirror addition of decimal numbers the way we do it with uh, uh, common, commonly used uh, decimal numbers. If overflow occurs, because we're constrained by the data type, if we need an extra bit, um, we have no choice but essentially ignore the carryover from the highest bit. And that would indicate an overflow uh, as a result of addition, but that's something that we're going to discuss later on. The idea of a two's complement binary rep representation conversion to its decimal uh, equivalent is based on, again, uh, the idea that uh, the leftmost bit indicates a sign of the number. So, for instance, if we have this example and we want to find out what is this number in decimal equivalent, we observe that the sign is negative. So, first we compute the two's complement of this value and it becomes, so we flip all of these bits and then we add 1. So the result is this. And then we use the formula where we basically take every bit and redistribute it like this. So these are the actual bits that you see in this combination. And we multiply them by powers of 2. And the actual power indicators are corresponding to the position of the bit. So 2 raised to the 0th power is 1, because any number raised to the 0th power is 1. So 1 times 1 becomes 1. And then we compute the rest of this, okay? And that's your uh, recipe to convert uh, this value to the corresponding uh, value in decimal format. So we end up with this, and it ends up to be 57. But remember, since we started with the, neg the idea that the number is actually negative, we have to add minus in front. So this is a negative 57. In the reverse conversion, we need to take a decimal value and convert it uh, to a two's complement representation. Uh, here on the slide, we have an example of a value 105, which we would like to convert to signed 8-bit quantity. In other words, two's complement representation of this value. Well, uh, 105 is a positive odd number. Our task is to find values of bits uh, from A7 to A0, corresponding to their position. And these are the actual position. So uh, the bit, the rightmost bit has numeric position 0, and in the middle it's this position, and the leftmost position is position 7. And of course, the leftmost position is a sign bit, and because this number is positive, it will be a 0. So first of all, we say that because 1 of 5 is positive, it's easy to assume that the value um, of the leftmost bit is a 0. Next, uh, if 
zero uh, if if a zero is one um, 